in the Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge. Oh, there she is. Oh, may I shake your hand? You're fabulous. Come on in. Let's talk. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. And as we say to most guests who come in and perform this early in the morning, thank you for... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is nighttime yeah. for some people. Right. You know? Yeah, I... definitely nighttime for me. What time do you usually get up? I don't know. It depends on the day. Yeah. But, uh, like 10 a.m. the earliest, <laughs> 11 a.m. Oh, that's, that's so nice. <laughs> <I'm> like... <laughs> so here's what we're hearing from your, your colleagues, that uh, you love to work. I do, yeah. I really do. And so if you're not working, do you feel like you're... You're moving backward. Do you ever just stop? Not that I'm moving backwards. I, I almost feel like um, when I'm doing nothing, I'm like, okay, what's what's the next move? I'm like right. anxious to get going. But you know, it's not work if you love it, right? So and I that's how I feel. It. Oh my gosh! I mean, I couldn't see myself doing anything else. Like I always tell people, I could be taking a midterm right now. You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm, I'm I'm playing music. I'm living my dream. So um, yeah, I, I really can't complain. I can't call it work. It's so work. you and I have something in common, even though. You, you, the way you did it turned into a successful musical career. When I was a kid, I I taught myself how to play the piano. But nice. They play by ear, as they call it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I could play anything. I could hear any song on the radio, her, and I could play it. Mm -hmm. And then my mom and dad said, let's get him a piano. So they bought me a piano. I was playing stuff. Every song I would hear on the radio, I could play. Then they said, let's give you piano lessons. And when I learned from a from a teacher how to play piano, their way, I couldn't play anymore. Yeah, that's so, that's how it works sometimes. So you are so self-taught on how many different instruments? Um, I play, uh, you know, piano, guitar, and also bass and drums. But uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it self-taught. But uh, my dad's a musician a little bit, and he he kind of showed me, showed me the ropes a little bit, you know. So growing up in the Bay Area, you grew up with uh, a house full of music at all times. Oh, yeah, all times. Like, what were the artists you just remember off the top of your head that you were listening to that you still Man, I mean, it was echoing today? It was everybody, but um, I just remember, like, mornings I would wake up in my house and James Brown is, like, playing throughout the house. Or, you right. know, I, <laughs> I hear Prince, you know, I hear Parliament. Um, the time, Parliament. yeah, wow. pretty right. much like in my house. I mean, the blues, BB King. Some days, you know, depends on how my dad was feeling or how my mom was feeling. Sometimes it was Madonna, you know, or, or Eric Clapton. So it's so many, so many different genres, so many different styles of music. So her grew up in a house of music, and now look at her as a musician. Yeah. I grew up in a house filled with guilt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still trying to make that pay off. I don't know. I really don't know. Gandhi. Yes. Yeah, so you go, obviously, her is what we call you, because you want the focus to be on the music. Absolutely. What about, like, today and society is making you take that, that route? You know, I think we kind of focus on the, the superficial things. With social media, we, we're only shown, you know, what people want us to see and um you know it's, it's really not about the face to me it's about the music i think we kind of lost sight of what's important and it's the music at the end of the day it's not what's you know what's going on and who's dating who i just wanted to stay away from all of that i don't belong to a clique i don't belong to you know a group of people or i, I didn't want like a crazy cosign or anything like that you know i just wanted my music to to you know live on its own and be the the forefront do you feel it's a little bit harder to not go down that direction of look at me, look at me and all of the bikini pics and the Instagram model right. stuff? Like, is it difficult for your career? I thought it would be. Up? I thought it would be at first. But, you know, I it, organically people were like, who is this? Who is this? I love this music. I think it almost it, it helped me. You know, it pushed me a little further because people didn't have any, uh, they couldn't make any assumptions. They couldn't say, oh, she's 21. I can't relate to this music. You know, they, it was like, you didn't know how old I was, what, what I look like, you know, or my ethnicity, anything. So you hear the music just as like you're reading someone's diary, kind of like when you read a book mm -hmm. and when you, when you read this book, you come up with the characters faces right. and, and you have your own version of the story in your head. Right, but it's it's still the same story. So, so when that's the movie how comes out from that book. You're like, that's not what I saw. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. So I, sometimes you know that I think that's what helped make the connection was people just put themselves into yeah. my stories. If you're just turning us on, her is here. Hard place, of course, her latest single. And uh, oh, you know, and by the way, just for the record, when I saw you perform on the Grammys, which was just a dropping performance. Thank you. I immediately tried to find a bikini picture, and I just. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm a little upset about that. 
I was just text messaged in. Uh, someone throw a bucket of water on her because she's on fire. Right now. That's funny. What's I think up, it's Danielle? great that you say that. You know, you want it to be about the music because I remember like some artists coming in here. Like Jessica Simpson is a good example. When she was singing before her massive empire of uh, you know clothing and shoes, sh- they were putting her on this crazy diet. Remember? And yeah. she said to us, "Why can't it just be about my music? Why does it have to be about the way I look or what I wear or how, you know whatever?" She was. She really went. And this was off the air that she wow. had said this to us. So I think a lot of artists feel the same way that you do. Right. You know? I think we're coming into that era of like, you don't have to look a certain way. Just be you. People are more attracted to something they can identify with and not something. At the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that other stuff is cool. It'll take you far in, in that way. But as far as longevity and, you know, uh, something that people can hold on to and feel and connect with, it's got to be real. You know, speaking of social media, we were looking at what you posted last, yes. I believe, or recently. Right, because we're all kind of in a dark place about the Nipsey hustle. Yeah. And right. I saw that he was one of your inspirations. And I just think it's so sad that at this point, you're not going to get a chance to work with him. I know. And I know that that's obviously affecting you. But I also saw that you are able to work so- with some of your inspirations, like maybe Janet Jackson coming up. Yes, really? absolutely. I mean, it's it's a conversation. It's about the right time. Obviously, I'm, you know, really busy and and so are they, so it's just about finding the the time. But I'm working on my album right now, so there's going to be some surprises there. Summertime release? Maybe. See, that's the thing. No one can nail it down. <laughs> yeah. No, nope, you can't. It's like uh speaking of Janet Jackson, last time she came to see us, uh she had people come in before and check the toilets for yeah. toilet cams. Wanted to make sure we <laughs> What? <laughs> Maybe she had a bad experience. I don't know. That's that's what I said. Wow. I say, what happened to yeah. make him do that? I'm that's like, oh, crazy. that's kind of creepy. You never Toilet know. Hey. No, that's never not right. Know. People are crazy. Well, that's the thing. And, and my point with this is listening to you talk about your seriousness of your for your work and your music and your craft. Then you have to roll it up with all the other superficial BS you have to deal with, right. with rumors and who's she dating and what yeah. she's wearing and all that. Right. I mean... Does it wear you down just trying to run away from it? Honestly. Or so so far you're successful running it and staying away from that stuff. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm I'm a pretty low key person. You know, I have my tight, tight circle of people. Um, and that's who I run with. That's who I always run with. But, you know, at the end of the day, as an artist, I my number one rule is you don't read comments. Because even, you know, you may <laughs> read you may right, you yeah. may read a comment and be like, yeah. they don't know what they're talking about, but then eventually it kind of like starts to get to you, you really start to think about it and question yourself. And um, it's easy to give into pressures, as we say, like, you know, the superficial pressures of of the music industry, especially being a woman in this day and age, you know how it is, like, looking at social media, like, what a woman should be Mm -hmm. and and all these things. Let us tell you what we think you should be. (laughs) Everything is so fake and airbrushed and filtered. Remember yesterday we had some guy on Twitter saying our show was, like, trashy garbage? Yes. And I was like... He's right on, yes. right on. I kind of <laughs> I mean, right on target. Are you excited about Lollapalooza? I, I mean, am. I'm looking at the lineup and I'm thinking, are you going to stay and like watch all the artists? I hope so. Yeah, I, I try to, but uh, there's so many dope things coming up this year. That's yeah. definitely like number one on my list of, of things I'm excited for. Well, you know what we're seeing with you before we before we uh, beg, beg you to leave. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it seems like the harder you work. Uh, the more comes your way, and it's the payoff is definitely there. Do you ever just Absolutely. stop down and go, God, this is paying off. This yeah. is great. I, I feel like I did that yesterday. Um, I was uh, doing the Stephen Colbert show, and, and it's little it's little moments of like just being on a stage or being in front of people, even people that don't know my name yet. Like I have the opportunity to show them why you know I, I won a Grammy or why, why I love music so much and, and the, the opportunity to play music everywhere around the world you know it's just those are the moments i'm like wow wow this is crazy so the takeaway for all of us no matter what you do as long as you love it that's right yeah there you go yeah you win hey her thank you for coming in today thank you for having me it's an honor having you uh whatever you do we're gonna support you we appreciate it come back and see us again appreciate it her